On the internet, when people outside the Balkans talk about the Balkans, it has become almost customary to talk about the area as if it is a living meme where ultra-nationalism, corruption, and poverty mean nothing real and consequential but are just props for the entertainment of the usually Western audience, which views the region in a highly exoticized way. Some will say that the memification of the Balkans is just for laughs, but in reality it perpetuates an image which doesn't correspond to the reality of the people who live in the Balkans, and reflects a hierarchical relation between the people of the Balkans and the countries which generate most memes about the crazy Balkans. In this video, we'll cover the complex history of the region of Sanjak. Beyond the stereotypes, nationalist claims, and exitizing oversimplification, we hope that you find the end result interesting. First things first, where is Sanjak? Sanjak is a region of the Balkans between southwestern Serbia and northeastern Montenegro. Depending on who you ask, the definition of Sanjak differs. About 55% of the people of Sanjak are Muslim, and 45% Serbian Orthodox. For both communities, it is generally accepted that Novi Pazar, Sjenica, Dutin, Priepolje, Nova Varos, and Priboy in Serbia, and Pljevlja, Berane, Petnica, Bjelopolje, Rojaje, and Montenegro are part of Sanjak. Muslims sometimes will include the region Plav Gusinje or Plava Gusija in Sanjak for religious reasons, while Serbs and Montenegrins don't even use the term Sanjak, which dates to the Ottoman era and means province, but prefer the term Araška, which was the name of the region in medieval times when it was a part of the Kingdom of Serbia. Regardless of the name, the geography of the region shows its importance. It links Bosnia to Kosovo and Montenegro to Serbia, as it is on the crossroads between all these areas. Hence, Sanjak is also a gateway from the inland of the Adriatic to the central Balkans. In ancient times, for this exact reason, the Lyrians first settled in the region in the Bronze Age and left tumuli burials on the landscape of Sanjak to remind us of the area's past, and the Roman Empire paid attention to maintaining a proper road network. During this era, it was a part of Dardania, and an important fort in Justinian's time in the 5th century CE was built, named Arsa. It was the name of this fort which Slavs when they came to the region in the 7th and 8th century first learned and applied as the name of the entire area. From its metathesis comes the medieval name Raska. Near Old Arsa, the medieval fortress of Stari Ras was built and near it the modern city of Novi Pazar, which is the largest municipality in Sanjak. In the 9th and 10th century, the area was fought over by Bulgaria, which actually held it for a few decades in the Byzantine Empire, which tried repeatedly to retake it. Eventually, the Serbs secured their rule in the region in the 11th century, and since then, it remained Serbian land until 1455. During this time, the Grand Principality of Serbia and the Kingdom of Serbia often used Stariras as one of their seats and built monuments like the Sopochani Monastery, built by King Stefan Uroš in the 13th century. The area was important economically as it had mines and the old trade town of Novi Pazar, merchants from the Adriatic flocked. The majority of the population of Raška in this time was Slavic Orthodox with Albanian and Vlach villages in certain areas. These two groups are mostly invisible in the records of the era as they moved with their flocks in the hilly landscape of Raška without being tied down as feudal serfs. Their presence was impactful. North Raška to this day is called Stari Vla, meaning Old Vlach. The history of Sanjak with its modern name begins around 1455. After the Battle of Kosovo in 1389, the Ottomans slowly annexed the region and in the next 70 years they conquered most of the central Balkans. Since the beginning, Sanjak was seen as significant for economic reasons. Hence, one of the first things the Ottomans did was to rebuild the old trade town near Stari Ras, and in this way, the city of Novi Pazar, literally meaning new trade town, was born. The name Sanjak refers to the Sanjak province, in Turkish, of Novi Pazar, which was to become the largest urban center of the area. During this time, most of the local Slavs remained Serbian Orthodox, but some had converted to Islam, while Albanian and Vlach Orthodox groups were being organized into their own Nahiyas, which is an Ottoman administrative subdivision which roughly refers to sub-districts. From the beginning, the Ottoman power structure in Sanjak, as elsewhere, followed the strategy of dividing more and more existing communities and giving them to different privileges and tax status in order to pit them against each other and portray itself as a neutral arbiter of local grievances. This is important to remember because while in modern Balkan history, all conflicts are usually presented as purely ethnic ones, many times what eventually presented itself as an ethnic conflict usually began as a result of economic conflict created by the Ottoman administration on the basis of old feudal divisions. 
An interesting aspect of this era is that just as some Slavs were becoming Muslim and identifying more and more with the Ottomans, the early Vlachs and Albanians were joining the local Orthodox Serbs with whom they shared the same religion and soon became Slavic speaking. Sanjak wasn't just multi-ethnic and multi-religious, but within each identity constant changes were occurring. In the meantime, the new feudal class of Sanjak included not only Muslim convert landowners but also Christian ones. At the end of the 17th century in the Great Turkish War, which lasted from 1683 to 1689, these class, ethnic, and religious divisions expressed themselves. During the war, the Austrian army reached deep into the Ottoman territory and was supported by part of the Christians. In Sanjak, the support came from the Serb Orthodox Christians, while in nearby regions, many Albanian Catholics joined the Austrian ranks. The town of Novi Pazar was burnt down, and its Muslim Serb population was massacred by the Austrian army in collaboration with the Serbian Orthodox feudal class. In northern Albania and Kosovo, the Catholic Albanian Fis revolted under the leadership of Archbishop of Shkup, Pieter Bogdani. This uniqueness in the situation is that Bogdani managed to overcome religious divisions and find support among both Catholic and Muslim Albanians. The difference in events in Sanjak, northern Albania, and Kosovo has to do with class divisions in the population. Catholic and Muslim Albanians mostly lived in the same conditions with the exception of few feudal families, while among Orthodox and Muslim Serbs, real class divisions had emerged because of Ottoman favorization of the Muslim feudal class, which hindered acts of solidarity between them. The Austrian army was eventually defeated and its retreat was followed by an exodus to the north of the Christian population. The Muslim Serb population in Sanjak retaliated against Christian Serbs. Many Christian Serbs of Sanjak followed the Austrian army northwards. This exodus also included Christian Albanians and Vlachs. The Ottoman response against the Fis of northern Albania was to try to expel them from their homeland in the accursed mountains and transport them to areas where it would be more easy to control and watch them. In 1700, the Catholic Kalmendi were deported en masse in the Peshter Plateau of Sanjak, which was largely uninhabited until then and they were barred from returning to their homes in Selsa and Nikč. A few years later, after many battles with the Ottomans, a part of the Kelmendi managed to return home, but another part was forced to stay in the region and gradually became Muslim. Today, in many villages of Sanjak, which were founded by Catholic Albanians who later converted to Islam, there is an old Latin cemetery, Latinsko Groblje. Albanian Fis, which one way or another settled in Sanjak in the late 17th and early 18th century, are Kelmendi, Shkreli, also known as Shkriel, today in Bosniak, Hoti, Grumiri, Gruda, and others. At the same time, other tribes in Montenegro, which were either Slavic-speaking or bilingual in Slavic and Albanian, came from today's Montenegro to fill in the demographic gap which had been created in Sanjak. They included mostly Kuchi, but also Vasiljevici, Bielopavlici, Piperi, and Nikšići. All these groups gradually converted to Islam and formed the new Muslim population of Sanjak. As such, at the beginning of the 19th century, Sanjak was composed of Orthodox and Muslim Serbs, Muslim and Catholic Albanians, bilingual Muslims and Slavic and Albanian who usually came from Montenegro. This division would play an important role in the next two centuries with the addition of another layer, Muslim Bosniak refugees who settled in the 19th century in Sanjak after Austria-Hungary occupied Bosnia. In part two, we will explore the history of Sanjak from the 19th century to the present day and how the politics of the great powers and ethnic conflict made Sanjak what it is today. Thank you for watching. If you considered this video essay informative, like, subscribe, and share. Most of all, we would like to read your comments and thoughts about the subject. Thank you again. See you next time.